denies. The Mega State Police urged to eschew partisan politics. In business, federal government approves over 1.8 billion naira for road repair. And on the foreign sea, Tunisia protests a planned visit of Saudi Crown Prince. Hello, there, and thanks for joining us on Super Screen Structure News. We're casting to you live from Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Adinke Oweye Ajiboye. The Lagos State Police Command has been urged to uh, play a neutral role in the forthcoming 2019 general elections. Uh, this call was made at a one-day training for officers and men of the Lagos State Police Command, which held today in Lagos State. Organizer of the workshop with the theme Militated Against Election Violence, Titilaya Kugumbambi, explained to the police officers the disadvantages inherent in being partisan during elections. We think that instead of waiting for violence to occur, like in the past election periods, we need to inform them of, of things that they can do to mitigate violence from occurring. We don't want to wait for the aftermath of violence. We want to fight it before it comes. And that is why we put this workshop in place for the senior officers, DPOs, head of department. It's like a trainer's tra um, training that they'll go back and impact it on their, the people that are working under them so that everybody will be informed on how to mitigate any, the strategies we're taught today on how to mitigate any form of violence during the election. The Western world have been having free and fair election, violence free. That is what we hope to achieve with this workshop. On his part, the Labour State Commission of Police, Edgar Imohime, appreciated the organizers of the event, maintaining that the police will remain above board before, during, and after the general elections. I've always placed premium on training and retraining. I believe that as officers and men of the Nigerian police force, we cannot give what we don't have. And for us to give what is expected of us, we must be trained. And that's why in line with the partnership clause in community policing and community safety partnership, I always partner with every group that comes to me uh, to offer, to offer their services, to offer their expertise, to offer their knowledge and time to train my officers and men. Former military head of state, General Yakubu Kowan has appealed to Christians in Nigeria not to retaliate of violence and other crimes against them. The retired general made this known at a Sunday prayer held for Nigeria. Nigeria's youngest military chief of staff at the age of 31, owing to a military coup d'etat in 1966, General Yakubu Gowan retired, led this national prayer service at the Deep Alive Bible Church in the garden. Expectedly, dignitaries were filled the church. And speaking after the service, a general go on retired, appealed to all Christians and not to retaliate violence, just as he called for continuous prayer for the nation. A view expressed by the general overseer of the church, Pastor William Skumui. God's word speak so eloquently to the situation of Nigeria today and I believe all times, at all times, yesterday and today, past and present. For this reason, the church needs to continue to stand in the gap for our nation. The church must provide a moral compass for the nation and cause darkness to recede and warn people 
to heed to truth, imbibe the fear of God, and to follow righteousness. Whatsoever the provocation, whatsoever the threat, for the sake of our country, for the love of our country, Nigerian Christians should never resort to a retaliation that would or could lead to a religious war uh, in the future. We have gathered here today to pray for our nation and the Lord is assuring us, I have heard your prayer. He had no mercy for Gentiles. I had to understand, as a new country, chapter 12, verse 21, it says, In his name shall the Gentiles trust. In his name shall the Gentiles trust. And here we are, Gentile nation. And here we are, Gentile continent. And we are trusting in Christ. He did not die for just Israel. He died for the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away, tell me out aloud, the sins of the world. Gentiles all included. And I say if God is answering the prayer of the Gentiles, there is hope for Nigeria. The presidency and other dignitaries emphasize the need for divine intervention for national growth and development in Nigeria. The first point is for us to thank God for the gift of children and youth in our nation. Sometimes we complain more about our youths instead of praising God for them. A nation with nearly 60% of its population as youths is a nation with hope. Let us thank God for our youths who had the hope for a better, greater, and a more prosperous tomorrow. Nigeria does need prayer because there are challenges. As the president has acknowledged a number of times, the challenges are multifarious, security, economic, political, social, and the rest. So apart from human effort, you also need the divine. That is why this program is significant. Nigeria needs healing. We can certainly take our country to another level, but we need to do it under a very safe and secure environment. So, 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 so my, 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 my advice is to all of us as stakeholders is to communicate it well and for our people to understand that politics and all it comes with it has to be done you know, with rule of law and with peace. If Nigeria must be entirely peaceful, no doubt constant prayer is key, especially in overcoming the challenges facing the country. Adenike Oweye. Now, Benio State Governor Samuel Tom has a threatened to report Senator George Akume to the Supreme Assembly of the Tiv Area Traditional Council over accusations that the state government is behind the killings in the state. A Chief Press Secretary, Teva Akase, who disclosed this in a statement, said uh, since Akume had chosen to tell President Mohamedou Buhari that militia herdsmen were not behind the massacre of Benue people, it implies that he has adequate knowledge about the killings and should explain to the traditional council in details. The governor also described Akume's utterances as shocking and unfortunate, which were clearly in favor of enemies of the state. The Social Economy Rights and Accountability Project, SEROP, is calling on the Accountant General of the Federation, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission to uh, carry out a joint investigation into the alleged bribery allegation against Kano State Governor Abdullahi Gandujay. Executive Director of SERAP, Adeto Mumuni, made the call in an interview with Superscreen in Lagos State. We call on the Attorney General, we call on the EFC and ICPC, that they should jointly now look into this matter. 
You see, they have the wherewithal to check the authenticity, authenticity of this video that is going on around now. Those that have the capac capacity and where we don't to look into it, should look into it so that when evidence are gathered, the property will have been done. And once Ganduje leaves the position of governor, he can be taken up on it. That is our position. Speaking on corruption, World President Mohamedou Buhari's administration, Adito Kumbo believes more needs to be done. More effort should be put into the anti-corruption war so that it doesn't, it doesn't fly off in our face. My, but my sincere opinion is that no matter what Nigerians are saying, I see that this government has done a lot of what had not happened in the year before 2015 with past government. I think this government is serious about that corruption, but I believe that more should be done. National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, says the challenge of ending mother-to-child transmission of HIV virus is caused by some pregnant women that refuse to attend anti-natal care. In commemoration of World AIDS Day in Abuja, NACA Director General Sani Ali, who made this known, said the babies are innocent and do not deserve to be brought into the world to suffer. On the way forward, Ali urged the pregnant women to register for the antenatal care at various health care centers for adequate care and proper monitoring. We're still concerned that a lot of babies are being born with HIV. We know that the challenge is all about bringing the mothers to antenatal care. Once they come to antenatal care, eight out of 10 pregnant women are tested for HIV. So really, the stumbling block is improving access and making sure pregnant mothers can come for antenatal care. Other aspects such as nutrition, malaria testing, full blood count testing in pregnant women, and more importantly, getting those pregnant women, particularly those in the rural areas, to start using antenatal facilities. The government is already putting in resources to renovate the primary health care centers. And as a first step of renovation of primary health care centers would be to upscale antenatal care. Well, the Director General of uh, a National Agency for Control of AIDS, NACA, speaking there. Uh, moving on in electoral matters, the Oshun Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, Satan, in the FCT High Court, has a shifted hearing in the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party, a PDP candidate, uh, Demola Adenike, until December 5 to enable parties in the matter put their houses in order. The tribunal ordered all parties appearing before it to file and exchange all necessary processes that will facilitate quick hearing of all issues on or before the adjourned date. A chairman of the tribunal, Justice Ibrahim Sirajo, ordered the lawyers to cooperate with his tribunal to enable it to discharge its mandate within the time allowed by law. Sirajo held that the tribunal may abridge time for the parties where necessary in order to ensure a quick dispensation of a petition within the ambit of the law. The Labour State House of Assembly Committee on Public Accounts has begun its oversight function of looking into the audit reports of over 200 ministries, departments and agencies for probity and accountability. Committee's chairman, Mashoud Oshun, who discussed this to newsmen after the committee interrogated state of fiscal planning permit authority, a last part officials, said the exercise is to ensure that public funds were judiciously expended. According to him, the exercise is an annual ritual for House Committee whenever the Auditor General finishes auditing all the MDAs in legal states. You're still watching Super Screen News at 8, coming up in business. 
Federal government approves over 1.8 billion naira for road repair. Details soon. Welcome back from our break. The federal government has approved a 50 million naira to each state road controller to facilitate speedy repair across the 36 states in the federal capital territory, FCT Abuja. A Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babantule Raji Fashala, made this known at the opening of a three day workshop organized by the Ministry for Road Controllers in Kaduna State. According to him, the workshop is to empower project managers to supervise projects under the watch with a limited available resources and within the shortest possible time. Fashala also said that there is need to expedite work on the road projects at hand before the next general elections. And in a related development, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashala, has inspected 215 megawatts of Kadena Power Plant project. The project manager Sunny Okwedi, while briefing journalists and the minister on the progress made so far, said the power control modules and other equipment were already on site and that work is ongoing without much hitches. He also said the engineering work is 98% complete, our procurement is 93% complete, and construction 76 complete. Nigerians have been advised to embrace the culture of saving as a means of fighting poverty in the country. And this was the submission of stakeholders at the 2019 Nigeria National Cooperative event held in Lagos State. Cooperative Society is a commercial enterprise owned and managed for the benefit of customers, workers and the nation at large. On a yearly basis, the Cooperative Society contributes its quota to the gross domestic product GDP of Nigeria, thus promoting the fight against poverty in the country by the government at all levels. Speaking at an event organized to earmark the benefit of Cooperative Society, the Lagos State Governor Akimumi Ambode, who was represented by a member in the Lagos State Cabinet, reminded the public of the potentials of cooperative society to reducing poverty and creating opportunities for the unemployed in the country. The cooperative system is a veritable instrument for the development of our society. Indeed, it is also a privilege and a great honor that you have acknowledged the efforts of our administration in the growth and development of the socio-economic space in Lagos State with the attendant impact on the Nigerian economy. The cooperative system of uh, economic empowerment, as we know it, is a key factor in poverty alleviation at the grassroots level of the community. It is also a determinant in the distribution of wealth across every sector of the society. I am happy to note that the cooperative entrepreneurial system is thriving in Lagos. The cooperative sector contributes immensely to the GDP of the nation. The activities of cooperative societies are too immense and numerous that they contribute financially and otherwise to the growth of the state and the nation as, as a whole. Some of them do a lot of other things. Very recently, one of the cooperative societies constructed 305 housing estate for its members. Others who spoke also listed the numerous benefits of cooperative society 
to the nation. Cooperative society will indeed go a long way in serving as a beacon of hope in these areas. And now the international oil branch mark Brent crude has fallen to its lowest level this year and below the proposed benchmark for Nigeria's 2019 budget. A Brent against which Nigeria's oil is priced plunged by $3.80 to $58 per barrel on Sunday. You recall that the Federal Executive Council FEC on October 24 approved the government's proposal of 8.7 three trillion naira for the 2019 budget and pegged the price of crude oil at 60 dollars per barrel up from 50.5 dollars for the 2018 budgets yes so watching super screens flagship news still ahead on the foreign scene Tunisia protests planned a visit of Saudi crown prince details in a moment <laughs> 